Hi everyone, this is Dr. Jawad. In this short video, I'm going to explain the difference and the similarities between cortisol and insulin resistance and how that pertains to your body. Now, what is cortisol? Cortisol first is producing the adrenal gland and cortisol is part of our stress hormone. Also too, it's it's part of our immune response. Cortisol stimulates the immune system to release white blood cells to, again, to heal the body. What happens is, again, it's released during times of stress. It's our stress hormone. Now, in long-term stress, when you have just chronic stress, the cortisol is being dumped into the system. What happens is that the cell becomes resistant. Okay, it's like a lock and key method. So what happens when too much cortisol is flowing around the cell, it do, in the bloodstream, it doesn't get into the cell because the cell shuts down. So the hormone is not going into the cell and what's happening, it, what's called it, the receptor downgrades. When you have too much of something, the body wants to downgrade because the body always wants to be in a steady state. So you don't have cortisol going into the cell, but what happens then you have too much cortisol flowing around the blood system. Now again, this is a safety mechanism. Now, the caveat is cortisol levels vary throughout the day. So it's typically high in the morning. It kind of takes a dip, it goes high, it takes a dip, it goes high, and it takes a dip typically by nighttime. So to actually have to measure the cortisol levels in the bloodstream is very, very hard to do. What will happen is that typically to do it is that you are going to be at a very, very, again, it's almost like the end stage of adrenal failure. So this is why it's hard to measure the cortisol through a bloodstream. This is why I always recommend doing the spit test throughout the day. You want to fill about five test tubes throughout the day because the levels vary. All right. Now the catch 22 about cortisol resistance and the symptoms is that you could have both symptoms. It just varies throughout the day. So again, if you have too much circulating, again, too, too much circulating cortisol in the bloodstream, this is where you get high, you know, deposition of belly fat high blood pressure. Decreased sleep because decreased sleep, what happens at nighttime while you're sleeping, cortisol levels should actually take a dip. Now if you have too much cortisol in your body, this is where it's going to interrupt the sleep because remember what cortisol does. Cortisol is our stress hormone. It awakens us. Loss of protein. Decreased bone density. So again, if you're not pulling that, if you're losing the protein, you're losing the bone density. And because Cortisol is our stress hormone, and if you have too much floating around your system, and cholesterol, cholesterol is actually good for us. Cholesterol is actually the repair system. I always call it cholesterol is the arterial band-aid. You're going to actually increase cholesterol levels due to stress, due to circulating hormone, because again, your body is in constant state of stress. And also the acid reflux. What's gonna happen is that you're, if you're in a constant go mode, you're not making enough stomach acid to close the valves, to prevent the acid reflux. So oftentimes people who have GERD or acid reflux are always stressed out. Now again, you could have the same symptoms. They fluctuate. So again, too much cortisol. So again, too much, not enough cortisol is getting to the cell because again, it's resistant. This is where you get chronic inflammation. People who are stressed out are always inflamed because what does cortisol do? Okay. What happens is that now they have an immune response. So if you, can't, if you don't have enough cortisol going to the cell, what do they give you? They give you prednisone. People are in chronic pain and stressed out, they give you prednisone, which is what? Cortisol. Also to allergies, because what is allergy? Allergy is an inflammatory response. So again, if you have low cortisol getting to the cell, this is where allergies occur. Asthma, memory. Too much flow in cortisol shuts down a memory. Very simple. If anybody have ever taken an exam, Test anxiety, they don't remember. However, they remember the next day. Why? Because being stressed out shuts down the part of the brain called the hippocampus, which is involved in working memory. Stressed. So again, so again, if you have high or low flow in cortisol, it's very sim the symptoms are very much the same. Okay? So let's bring it into insulin. So what happens if you have too much insulin in your system? The cells become insulin resistant. You have too much flow in insulin, it's not getting to the cell, the cell down, again, downgrades and it blocks. This is where you become insulin resistant. Now, this is where the pancreas comes in, okay? Because a pancreas is a phenomenal organ. It's an endocrine and an exocrine organ. So, insulin is produced in the pancreas. It's released when you have a sugar 
because the function of insulin is to basically is to drive nutrition into the cell. So what happens when you, when you become an insulin resistant, the cells don't get nutrition and they, and they get starving. Your cells are starving because you have too much insulin floating around your, the blood and it's not getting into the cell, okay? So again, <clears throat> what's gonna happen? So with insulin resistance, if you have too much, this is where again, you're thirsty. Because why? Because the cells aren't getting the nutrition and they're starving. You're thirsty all the time, excessive urination, dry mouth, belly fat. Wow, belly fat with high insulin and belly fat with high cortisol, it's pretty much the same. High blood pressure, high blood pressure, inflammation, inflammation. You're feeling tired all the time. Why? Those cells aren't getting, they're not getting the nutrition that they need. So what's happening is that you become tired. Your memory gets zapped, okay? But also too, now, now you have low, you have low insulin going to the cell. So this is where you get irritable, lightheaded, sweet craving, you're craving sweets all the time. Why? Because you have too much insulin and it's not getting into the cell, so you're craving food. Your brain needs sugar, glucose, first and foremost, to function. And if it's not getting that, this is where you crave sweets. You're hungry all the time, headache, weak, you're weak, because again, your, your body is not getting the proper nutrition. And your anger, you're angry all the time. So basically the cells are starving. So as you can see here, what triggers it? Cortisol resistance is due to stress. Too much stress will cause cortisol resistance. What's hap what causes insulin resistance? Sugar. How do you, how, now how do you calm them both down? First, you change your diet around Whatever, again, whatever increase in that insulin, you have to decrease it. And what increases insulin? Sugar. Stress, you have to learn how to manage stress. Now, here's one thing. Now again, this is how it all bleeds together. So when you have too much cortisol in your system, what happens, it turns the body proteins into glucose. Which in turn, so now you have too much glucose around, flowing around your system, which you become insulin resistance, and this is where you become, a, this is where, again, the possibility of diabetes increases. So you don't actually have to be a diabetic because you're excess, because you have excessive, you eat a lot of foods, okay? You can become a diabetic, how? Just by too much stress. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Hello, this is Dr. Juwad. Please subscribe to my channel for more up-to-date videos, and thanks for watching.